Hey friend, Chris Van Deviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I wanna show you how you can use multiple MIDI controllers to control multiple software instruments in Logic Pro 10. This is a question that can crop up fairly frequently, so I just wanted to show you quickly how you can achieve this. First things first, I have three controllers connected to my Mac right now. I have an iPad running Logic Remote, I have a Nectar Impact controller, and I also have Native Instruments S-Series Complete Control controller connected as well. So the big question is, is how do you get multiple MIDI controllers to record on different software instrument channels without playing all of the other instrument channels? It basically all boils down to one project setting. And if we head up to File, Project Settings, under Recording, we have this option here called Auto Demix by Channel if Multi-Track Recording. So for now, let's turn this off. Now I have a Bluebird drum kit, I have a bass guitar, and I have the electric keys. Now I'm just gonna select the drums and I'm going to play anything on my complete controller here. As you can hear, it's playing all three instruments across the board. This is not at all what we want. And so first things first, we need to enable this auto demix by channel of multi-track recording under the MIDI recording project settings. But we don't just stop there. At this moment, I can play each instrument individually based on the controller, check it out. I've played all three controllers, but I had to do some routing to achieve this. So let's check it out. If we select each of my software instrument tracks, I have here the track inspector open. If you take a look right here, MIDI channel, I've set up a MIDI channel for each instrument. My electric keys is set to MIDI channel three. The bass guitar is set to MIDI channel two. And my Bluebird kit is set to MIDI channel one. Okay, point here is, is that we have to set a specific MIDI channel for each software instrument. And we also have to specify to each controller what MIDI channel we want it to correspond with. This is where things can get a little complicated because maybe you're not familiar with the way to set up MIDI channels with your particular controller. And it very much depends on your MIDI controller. Some manufacturers have software that comes with their MIDI controller. So you can just dig into the software and specify there. Or if your MIDI controller doesn't have software attached to it, you'll have to specify using the controller itself. So let's check it out. I actually have complete control open right here. Under this MIDI menu here, under keys, I was able to specify that I want the S-Series controller to run on channel three. So you just select from this drop-down menu, one through 16 because we're provided with 16 different MIDI channels. And then within Logic, we can see here, MIDI channel three. So now the two are tied together on this specific MIDI channel. Now with my impact controller from Nectar, there is no software to just dive into and just quickly set up. So instead, I'm gonna bust out a PDF for this particular controller. And if we go ahead and find channel, and we'll just flip through here, Cool, so under program assign, I actually had to press a setup button, then I hit the low D1, and then I press one of the assignable MIDI buttons to select for assignment. So on the controller itself, some of the white keys have numbers attached that are listed above the keys. So it's one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Following these instructions in the PDF with this particular controller, I was able to set it up for MIDI channel two. Now with the iPad, I didn't dig too far into it. I don't think there's a way to specify MIDI channel, but I could be wrong. That's fine, we're gonna move forward from here. Just know that your particular MIDI controller has its own specific way that it prefers to set up for MIDI channels to send MIDI data. But now that I went ahead and I set up that project setting for Auto Demix, set up a MIDI channel for each of these software instrument tracks, and I made sure to record enable each of these tracks, and you can see all three R's are red for record, the middle one is not highlighted, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and start recording. So I'm just gonna have this on the loop, I'm gonna hit record and I'm just gonna start playing in my performances so you can see how this works. It's also worth pointing out that in the region inspector here, I've set the quantize to 16th note. Otherwise, my performances are gonna be abysmal. But I've noticed that when the quantize value is on, if I'm not a little behind the loop at the start of each loop, the notes tend to get cut off or disappear. So just keep that in mind. Well, let's check it out here.
So as you can see, everything has been recorded. I think there's some hidden stuff going on here, but that's fine. Check it out. As I pointed out, sometimes the first note gets cut off. You have to be kind of behind the click if you have the quantized value going on, at least in my experience, using the cycle range and just looping or recording. But nonetheless, this is how you set up multiple MIDI controllers for multi-track recording. Once again, you go up to File, Project Settings, under Recording, and under this MIDI tab here, Auto Demix by Channel, and then you set up a specific MIDI channel for each software instrument. So for my Liverpool bass here, I set up MIDI Channel 2, MIDI Channel 3 for the electric piano, MIDI Channel 1 for the drum kit, and then after that, I had to look up the directions for how to specify MIDI channel output based on manufacturer and controller. In the case of the complete controller, I was able to set up based on software. So just dig into complete control under the setup options. With the impact controller from Nectar, I had to specify using the setup controls on the keyboard itself. And with the iPad where I didn't specify MIDI channel output, I just made sure that the Bluebird kit was selected and highlighted within the main tracks area, that was what was in focus on the iPad itself. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.